Hey, Bonnie's fans. Basketball season is just around the corner. And when it arrives, there will be a new look squad this year at the Riley Center. During the preseason, we'll be getting to know our newcomers before they wear the brown and white for the first time. I'm Jack Milko, and today I'll be chatting with Chad Venning. Bonnie's fans, we're here with Chad Venning, who comes to St. Bonaventure from Morgan State. He's a six foot ten forward, and he's really excited to be up in Western New York. You arrive at Bonaventure, a new team. How, how does it feel to be a Bonnie? It feels good. Like the first thing I noticed out of anything was like the environment and how like involved everybody is with everybody. It's a community. So let's talk about your upbringing. Uh, you're, you're born and raised in, in Brooklyn, New York. Well, I was actually brought up in two places, Brooklyn and Atlanta, like our Stone Mountain, Georgia. So going back and forth each year was a little bit different. Uh, I wasn't really involved in any sports or anything like that back then. The most I did was uh, boxing when I came back to New York. Regular childhood, suburban kid, then moved to the city back and forth. So it was like, I got the best of both worlds, so to speak. My understanding, your father is a boxer. You want to touch on his career? Yeah. Yeah, my, my father was a um, middleweight fighter. Um, he retired early when he had my um, first sister. So he retired and I was training with him in boxing for a little bit as well when I was younger. You trained uh, to become a boxer. What what did that training look like? And, and how often were you training to become a boxer growing up? Uh, probably every, every day um, we would hit the track on Sundays, run a mile, then we would work on my footwork and on the tire and then just regular jabs and stuff like that, advanced movements and mechanics, stuff like that. And when did you make the transition from boxing to basketball? I never actually thought about basketball at first. In middle school, the inner city kids always was playing basketball. And one day I decided, hey, I wanted to do this too. And then I grew really tall. I got really tall in like one summer. And so my father, I was in a barber shop one day and my father and, his, and the barber, they were conversating amongst each other and it was like, yo, if you really want to play basketball, I got a team for you. And then he called one of my oldest coaches, Coach Smoke, who first got me involved in it. And the rest has been history. You get connected into the New York City basketball track, which as you and I both know, there's no better place to grow up playing basketball than in the city. Yeah. So whereabouts in the city did you play? Who'd you play with? Uh, how, how did how did your rise in the New York City basketball scene help you make you into a Division One basketball player? Uh, it was really all the connections from Brooklyn got me here. So my first appearance in the Brooklyn scene was the Brooklyn Rings, where well, Coach Smoke was uh, there. Uh, then I transitioned to high school. When I finally got to high school, I went to Bishop Lachlan, Edwin Gonzalez. Um, good coach, you know, and then that connection helped me go to my prep school years, which were in Massachusetts, Connecticut, where I spent with Coach Jock Rivera uh, at McDuffie School and Woodstock Academy. All guys, New York natives, my coach was a New York native. Uh, so it's just, it just felt like home already. And so you get to prep school in New England and you said there's some correlation in prep school, considering your coaches were both New York natives. And yet, obviously, being in New England, it's a lot different from being in Brooklyn and even mm. suburb of Atlanta, like you mentioned. How did that experience in prep school, did that really take your game from here and bring it to the next level? I, I would definitely say so. You know, Coach Jock Rivera is very serious about his not only winning basketball games, it's getting his players to that next level and next step. Um, it definitely helped me early mornings in the gym. Gym access and ability, it wasn't used to that. I'm from New York City, it's not many. You gotta usually share the gym with the school and stuff like that, but New England, you know, prep school life, you know, they have their own gyms and stuff like that. So you could really go and then train and really just work on yourself. You don't got the distractions of the city weighing on you. You don't got anything of the sorts. You're away from home, but it's like, you still have a family there when, you, when you're when you really involved with the team. What was your favorite moment at Woodstock in Connecticut? My favorite moment is probably just literally 
all the times we were in the dormitory. Like, we had an A team, we had a B team. So it was like 28 of us just packed into one one building. It was just, all those times was fun. All those times was fun. So the camaraderie is quite something, isn't it? Now, do you, yeah. have you had the opportunity to have that experience at St. Bonaventure already? Yes, I'm, I'm, we actually, like the team, we just gravitated towards each other. Like it's actually probably my first time being on a team that's this like tight and together. Like we all just gradually just got along from the first time seeing each other. And what led you to consider St. Bonaventure? St. Bonaventure has been with me even while I was in high school showing interest. I was already familiar with the staff and so when I finally made my decision to up and leave Morgan, I felt comfortable to come to St. Bonaventure because I was already familiar with the staff. I already know about the facility, so it was just felt the right. Your mom ran a nonprofit organization down in Atlanta, and you, you mentioned to me mm -hmm. earlier that she moved back up north. But would you want to touch on the work that she did? I, I know f um, from people I've talked with, you were you're quite close with her, and you also worked mm -hmm. with her a little bit, correct? Yes, yes, my mother is definitely a big inspiration towards me. Uh, so the organization you're talking about was called YPM Young People Matter. My mother basically uh, ran a youth shelter for kids that were in the process of trying to find a home for themselves or in the process of going to school, but they didn't have a place to go. It's like temporary housing and helping with shelter and food and stuff like that, where she would go on outreaches and try to find kids, homeless kids and help them just with a stable place up until the point they could get themselves together. It just felt good to help other people and see other people try to work themselves out and have long life connections with those people and seeing them in better places now. And now let's move to the rapid fire round where we ask Chad some simple questions. And the first softball I'm gonna to toss at you, Chad, is what is your favorite time of year? My favorite time here? Favorite time of year, I'm sorry. Oh, favorite time of year. My favorite time of year is Christmas. I love like the winter and stuff like that. I just feel jolly, I don't know, it's just a different. So you will experience winter unlike any other at St. Bonaventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard, I heard. <laughs> That's terrific. Uh, my next question for you is, who is your favorite basketball player? My favorite basketball player is Joel and B and Excellent. Jokic. And Jokic. Those are two, yeah. two, two of the best big men in the league today. Probably the two best, right? Those two and Giannis. Mm -hmm. I, I would say so. Um, now here's here's a little bit of a curveball for you. Who is your favorite athlete that's not a basketball player? My favorite athlete that's not a basketball player, Muhammad Ali, easily. Easily. Chad, that's my favorite athlete too. I love Muhammad Ali, and I love how you go back to the boxing. That that that's terrific. He he is the greatest, right? Incredible, 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 incredible. Uh, my next question for you is: What's your favorite hobby? My favorite hobby is uh, playing playing the game competitively. Okay, and that could be a, any variety of games, board games, video games. Oh, video games competitively, like uh, <laughs> like esports and stuff like that. I'm really into it. I love it. I love it. Um, and I've got two questions left for you. Uh, my first question is: What is your favorite food? My favorite food is probably uh, shrimp alfredo. Very nice. And finally, and this is perhaps the most difficult question you'll be asked all day, in mm. three words, how would you describe yourself as a person? Uh, respectable, determined, and motivated. Excellent. Those are three terrific words. Bonnie's fans, you've just heard from Chad Venning. It's going to be an exciting year in the Riley Center, and you will get to see Chad don the brown and white for the first time come November 7th when the Bonnies open up their 2022-23 season against St. Francis. Thanks so much, Chad. Appreciate you having Thank me you. on. Cool. Go Bonnies.